marginal decade is the last decade of your life. So everyone will have a marginal decade. Uh, most people certainly don't know the day they enter it. Um, sometimes you know when you're in it. You know, if you're, especially if you're nearing the end of it, a person probably has a sense of that appreciation. But it is an important uh, model because I think that the marginal decade for most people is a, really a period of poor life quality. Uh, physical health has usually declined significantly. Cognitive health potentially has declined as well. And as I as I sort of observed many people in their marginal decades, including you know people I've been close to, um, I noticed that there can be a great sense of withdrawal uh, because of these things. Right, you're not participating in 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 life. So the idea here is quite simple, right? Which is if you plan to have a remarkable marginal decade, by definition, it means that all the decades that came before it also had to be pretty remarkable. And the analogy I use in the book is that of an archer, probably because that's what I am. But if you really want to be proficient at 50 yards with a bow and arrow, practice at 100, and you'll be amazed at how simple 50 becomes and 60 and 70 and 80. It's a very nonlinear relationship in terms of accuracy with a bow and arrow. The centenarian decathlon becomes the scaffolding upon which I actually think of this. So this again came from an idea or an observation I suppose I had in my own life, which was from age 13 to about 42, I was constantly involved in something very specific that I was training for. So I never exercised, I trained. Right? I trained for boxing, I trained for cycling, I trained for swimming, I had competitions, I had meets, and everything I did vis-a-vis -vis exercise was in service of a goal. And that made it very easy. There, there was real specificity to what I did. And then when I sort of hung up my bike, I realized, oh my God, like I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm still exercising, but it didn't feel like it had a purpose. And I sort of realized that's actually how most people exercise. And when compared to the alternative, which is not exercising, that's okay. But I realized as I thought more about this marginal decade, I needed to be very specific in my training to make sure I didn't arrive there and sort of leave it to chance. Would I be strong enough, healthy enough, have enough balance, all of those things. And so what I realized is I had to, you know, to borrow the phrase from Annie Duke, I had to backcast from that marginal decade around a set of very specific events. And that set of events, um, we, would, we would call the centenarian decathlon. And everybody's gonna pick different events. These can be activities of daily living. These could be very specific you know, recreational activities. I think it's a good idea to have both in there. Um, and the more specifically you train for those, uh, the, the more directed your training is. Yeah, and I think what would be helpful right now is I know you have that list yeah. right next to you, is maybe just reading through your list. And again, as you kind of stated, your list doesn't mean it has to be everyone else's list. But a lot of times, I think when there's newer concepts or people are trying to figure out how this works, it's helpful to hear like an example. So do you kind of want to just burn through your list and let people know how you're thinking about this in your life? Yeah. And, and I, I will say this, it's organized in a way that's a bit confusing um, because in my mind, I'm constantly thinking, okay, mobility and strength matter, um, aerobic uh, capacity matters. So sort of aerobic efficiency matters, peak aerobic performance matters. Um, so I'm in the back of my mind thinking, I have to make sure I can do all of those things well. And then some of my centenary and decathlon Olympics are like exercises or metrics or feats mm -hmm. and others are activities. So I'll, I'll try to add a bit of color here, right? And real quick, you kind of mentioned your four pillars of exercise, but people also know them by different things, which is zone two maybe or VO2 max. So do you just kind of want to explain Yeah, so when bit? I talk about aerobic efficiency, that's zone two. When I talk about peak aerobic output, that's VO2 max, strength, stability, in with stability is mobility, balance, things like that. Okay, so in no particular order, um, pick up a 30 pound child from a squatted position or from a crib. Those are two very difficult positions. So that requires strength, stability, mobility. Get up off the floor with one point of support. That's stability and strength. 
Place a 30 pound suitcase overhead, strength, also mobility. Dead hang for 30 seconds, strength and stability. Farmer walk for one minute with 25% of body weight in each hand. So again, it's something that today I could do for a day. That's really, that's really pushing the bounds of what I would want to be able to do in my 80s, for example. Strength and anaerobic. Uh, pull or push a weighted sled 100 feet with, and I've put in here kind of a metric of resistance. Um, again, what is that really all about? Um, this is kind of one of those things. If you're in a, if you're in a dangerous situation, uh, you know, a spouse has fallen, you have to pull somebody out of the way or something like that. Walk up and down stairs with feet pointed perfectly forward. So if your feet are pointed perfectly forward as you're walking up and down flights of stairs, it means you still have the ankle mobility to do that. So you can get an angle between your foot and your tibia, your shin, um, into an acute angle as opposed to having to turn your feet outward. Uh, single leg stand with eyes open for 30 seconds, with eyes closed for 15 seconds. Single leg um, uh, get up without support. So like getting up off a seat, for example. Um, hex bar deadlift my body weight for five reps. Again, pretty aggressive, not now. Uh, a dumbbell lunge in perfect form with 15% of my body weight in each hand for 10 reps. Cover three miles in one hour by foot. So again, that's 20 minute mile is pretty slow. But if you think about being able to do that in the last decade of your life, Carry 20 pounds up four flights of stairs. Produce a VO2 max above 30 milliliters per minute per kilogram. And if you can do that, that that basically buys you a whole bunch of activities. That means you could walk up a 6% grade at three miles an hour, you know, for a period of time, not necessarily for an hour, but but perhaps for, if, you know, 20, 15 minutes. Tread water for 10 minutes. Um, not that I have a plan to, but you and you think about what's implied, like that's a very functionally aerobic thing to do. Scale a ledge at shoulder height or pull myself out of a pool onto a deck 12 inches above the water surface. Um, single leg glute bridge, 15 reps without loading my lumbar spine. Um, and uh, do a plank in perfect form with scapula retracted, no hip sag for one minute. So I have several of these lists. There are things that I would add to this that are, you know, or I have on a different list that get more into recreational activity. So I, I do want to be able to pull a 50 pound bow back, a compound bow that's 50 pounds. And a compound bow, of course, lets off as you get further, but you still have to be able to pull 50 pounds at the outset. So, Yeah, and I think it's helpful for people because if you think about the list, you made very specific things, but you kind of hinted at there's a reason behind everything, right? Like the the dumbbell, being able to lift it is you, grandkids, great grandkids, you wanna be able to play with them. Being able to get off the ground is you wanna be able to live by yourself or with a spouse and be able to like fully move, not worry about falling. And so if anyone's having trouble kind of thinking about how they do it, it's sometimes it's helpful to just take a step back and be like, you know, do you wanna live in a city area where you can walk to get groceries and bring them back? And then you can get specific from there too. So, you know, for anyone who's kind of thinking, okay, what, specifically should they think about for that, always feel free to take a step back and then get detailed going forward.